so as I was just walking through on a coaching call a minute ago, I was sharing this with one of my clients. Uh, it's a strategy that I, I kind of came about with. Uh, I got trained on a strategy like this when I was really first started in college. And my personality is different than yours. I'm not very high eye. Um, I can adjust to being high eyes. So my gray part of my high eye, when I am you know, know that I'm being observed, can go up. But I'm usually like maybe 50 or so I and maybe adjust up to 60 or 70. So when I was in college, um, I went to a school that had 2,000 students roughly. It's a small school. Uh, got lucky enough to get a golf scholarship to go play there. Um, but I got into a fraternity. The fraternity there with a school of 2,000 um, historically has been one of the biggest chapters of the Kappa Sigma fraternity in the nation over and over again. And I learned really some marketing skills that they had there. One of the things that they did really well is they dominated all the student Senate elections. They always threw really, really good parties. Everything that they did was very, very well attended. And I started relating that to kind of what the mortgage business looks like today. And I thought, well, what, what do they do um, to get word out on stuff? Because it's all very grassroots guerrilla marketing type techniques. And it was just so simple. Um, and it, it kind of follows this formula over here. It's accumulate, validate, isolate, differentiate, and close. So I just actually thought about this 15 minutes ago when I was on a sales call. And I wanted to come up with a lot of eight words just because it's easier to remember. And it just so happened as I laid it out, it spelled avid. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to teach people to be an avid closer. So accumulate, what would you do? Well, that's marketing. That's gathering people together in groups that have some type of thing that differentiates them or that makes them part of your target. So when you're marketing, you're broadcasting that message out, but you're trying to accumulate a group of people that may potentially be people you could do business with. Um, and at that point, you're broadcasting message out to everybody because you don't necessarily know who you're talking to yet. So here's what they did. So a group of 100 and something fraternity brothers at school, when we'd have a party going on on Wednesday night, um, when we did our Monday night fraternity meetings, we'd like, all right, guys, here's kind of what's going on this week. So on Wednesday night, we're going to have, we had a big party called the Scary Buff. It was like a Halloween party, you know, that we did. So Wednesday uh, night's so. going to be our scary buff party. You know, we're going to have a couple of kegs, costume contest. Uh, it's going to start at six o'clock. It's going to be, you know, uh, fundraising donations, $5 at the door. Uh, Zetas are going to be mixing with us. Talk it up. That was the word. Talk it up. So what ends up happening? Well, when you went to your class throughout the day, so it's, you know, Monday, Tuesday, before the Wednesday night party, at the end of class, your job was, no matter who you are, you're a fraternity member, is you would go to get the word out. Hey, guys, uh, at the end of class, bell ring, everybody's getting their clap up, crap up, getting ready to leave, or professor dismisses you. We got our scary pup party at the fraternity house tonight, uh, or Wednesday night. Uh, $5 cover, you know, we got uh, Coors sponsoring the event. We got a charity that we're donating to. You can get a t-shirt for 15 bucks. You guys come by. Love to see you there. By Monday afternoon, everybody on campus knows. Because we basically had this core group of 100 people out there spreading that word for us. And that's kind of what viral marketing is like today. There wasn't social media back there. But, you know, so we accumulated. Basically, we targeted the whole campus. We wanted to get the word out the whole campus we had a good group of people to go get word out there for us um and by wednesday night and we, we'd have the place packed so how does that kind of relate to what we're doing here in the mortgage industry the two ways that i think that we do stuff like this are one of the best ones for a high i think is like an agent marketing academy class so you're going to accumulate so your first phase is marketing that you've got a class so you got to identify what your tools are to get the word out is it, am I better off to meet with a broker one-on-one -on -one or go through one of my better realtor relationships out there? Because the audience already exists. The audience for us was the campus. 
and we already had something in common with them and we had venues that we could share information through just getting the word out. But if it wasn't so quite so clear, if I didn't have this Keller Williams agency where I had a relationship with, then I'm going to have to go to some type of a broadcast marketing, like in this day and age, like social media, or think about like what we did. If we wanted to get the word out, like let's say I was a charity and I worked for, you know, American Heart Association, I could go through the fraternity to, to say, hey, we want you to sponsor this event. Can you help get people there? So I use that 100 audience to accumulate and they spread the word for me. Gotcha. That would be like going to the broker. That's my captive audience. This community that I'm looking for is that particular agency and leverage with them to share the word. You could also do that with the real estate agency or a real estate association. I'm going to go to the association of realtors in Davidson County, Williamson County, whatever, get them on board. We've got a shared goal in educating real estate folks out there and they could help broadcast that message out. But the first stage is basically accumulation. We've got to identify who our group is, figure out what our resources are and get these people together. We can do, deliver the message to them. The next one's going to be validation. Which one of these people are players? Once I get these people into this group, how do I determine which one of these guys are players? So in your Agent Marketing Academy class, it's probably going to be the people that may reach out to you after the class. Or if you've got an internet active enough class, then you may get some information off them. Or if you pre-register them like you're supposed to do, you may actually be able to go and get their numbers and determine what type of volume they're doing so you know that you're validating that there's somebody to follow up. And then it's isolation. You got to get them one-on-one -on -one then. So let's figure out, I know Rocky's a player now. He was at the Agent Marketing Academy. I did volume qualification on him. He had a good personality. I can get away along with him. So I'm going to set him up for a one-on-one. -on -one. And then I'm going to differ differentiate and probably also in that needs to be add value. I got to figure out an, an eight word for that. Um, so what makes us different? What's our unique sales proposition? What can I do to add value? It may be something like playbooks. Uh, it may be, you know, um, once you do your interview with them, you, you're going to ask them what their three non-negotiables are and, just, and figure out what their business is at. And then you may turn around and revisit that to answer what their problems are and then you close them. So in my mind, you know, so what does a calendar of a high eye look like? It probably looks like what are my opportunities to accumulate people together in some group, validate, isolate, differentiate, and close. So you can loop out a lot of that by doing popping by open houses, but then you've got to do your homework up front. So you've identified them as a realtor. If they're doing an open house, they're going to be a realtor. you got to validate. So then you got to go get your numbers. Are they some realtor that's worth calling on? And if not, then if you're just doing pot buys on open houses, then you're still validating. So really what you're doing is you haven't accumulated yet. You're just going at one at, one at a time and validating. So then you pop by the open house, give them a playbook, see if it gets their attention. If you've got a personalized playbook, if they react to that, they're kind of self-selecting. If they don't react to that, they're stupid. They're probably not somebody to call on. I mean, you know, if you don't realize that branding pieces like this add value to what you're doing as a realtor out there, then you don't pass the litmus test. If you're not friendly, if you're not, you know, outgoing, gregarious, you're not going to make it, you know. So I've validated you there. I don't need to isolate you. But then you're going to get one out of the four or five you drop by that maybe is, you know, maybe they're newer, but you got it. They got some of that, you know, X factor that's going to help them chance. Then you're going to go ahead and isolate and differentiate. Probably not going to do it right there at the open house unless there's nobody there, but you're going to set up a one-on-one -on -one with them. So, you know, in my mind, if I'm Rocky, I'm looking at what type of opportunities do I have to focus on what my, my strengths are. And you're going to be good in front of groups but then you just have to go through down the validate, isolate, differentiate, and close section. Maybe not be so good on the differentiate. Uh, probably a lot of your differentiation is just going to be Rocky. You have people buying Rocky, but is there something else you can do to add value other than just Rocky? Because there's other guys out there that are high high that you're just, 
you're competing head to head with. So what can I do that's going to differentiate? That's what we got stuff like this for, because that makes you help you differentiate. If I've got a monthly playbook subscription that I'm giving to them and I've got uh, my headshot on there or my caricature on there, I've got something adding value. If I'm doing monthly agent marketing academy classes, I'm adding value, you know, to some degree, just our process of upfront underwriting when we're not busy as hell as we are right now adds value as it differentiates yourself out there. And then the close for me and you maybe not be the same as what, you know, some hardcore closers it's going to be like. The close for me is typically something along the lines on what would it take for me to do to get some of your business? Not going to put it on them. That's put it on me. What would it take for me to do? And like if they give you something, then you know what you got to do. If they don't, you know, I, I got, I give all my business to my brother. He's been in the business for, you know, that's hard to beat. I, I can't compete with that. What, you, what am I supposed to do? You know? Uh, but what you're going to get sometimes is, if you ask one of these key questions, which is in the, the core script that I've got over here, I'm going to pop it up real quick. Peter slow. Uh, no, that's not what I was looking for. There it was. One of my key questions that I ask realtors is still not it. See if I'm 0 for 3, if I'm going to strike out. <laughs> what are three things that you would change about the lending industry if you had a mag magic wand? Still don't think that's the right one. I'll fight it here in a minute. What that does is it it doesn't indict their personal relationship that they've got with their existing lender. Because if I was to ask them, what do you not like about Rocky? Or what's Rocky done wrong? That's going to put their defenses up and they're going to protect Rocky. But if I ask them what they don't like about their lending industry right now, they're going to tell them experiences that they're having with working with Rocky that they don't like. And that gives you your opportunity to try to come in and solve those problems for them. So, gotcha. So, you know, during a weekly basis, what would I be doing? You know, I think at, at least a, once a month, you ought to have an agent marketing Academy class. If I'm as gregarious and outgoing as you are, uh, I'd do them more often than that. I might try to have one every week. And so then what are you filling your activities with? Um, in the weeks that you're not doing that, you're aggregating and accumulating. You've got to get people in those seats. So all the activities that I'm going to have are going to be built around marketing that event. I'm basically taking my 100 fraternity brothers and I'm getting the word out. So every piece of communication that you've got that's going out during that week, whether it's a phone call, it's an email, on my voicemail, I want everything that I've got pointing to that event. So my email signature needs to say, hey, next Agent Marketing Academy event's coming up Wednesday if it's one that you're trying to gather, you know, people to come to versus one at a particular agency. If it's a particular agency, then you're doing that same thing, but just to those particular, that audience there. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, if you've got three Keller Williams offices you can do that with, then you could literally do, be doing one of those uh, a month with each one of those offices. Now you got three of those events, but you just need as many accumulation opportunities you can have because you're going to influence some people there. That's just who you are. So you're going to win by the more people you can get in front of and validate them, isolate them, differentiate. And what would it take to get your business? And the more that you do that, the more you're going to win. And that way you're not all over the place trying to do, you know, 15 different things. You can be busy enough, but you just may be doing the same two things, maybe a, a the same agent marketing academy class um, three different times a month. And then you may be doing, I kind of like the idea of doing a playbook class. 
one of the things that really got my attention in the last month's realtor playbook um, was the buyer consultation form. Did you see that in there? I did not. So I've gone over this example before. So Bill Belichick gets the playbook and he hands it over to the team and he goes, have fun. Is that how it works? And they just automatically start running the plays out? Okay, what is he going to do? No, he's going to walk them through it step by step, watch yeah. them do it, give them feedback. So my thinking was, as I was going back through what I did during my breakthrough classes, what went right, what went wrong, and I just had a, a coaching call with the client that's doing one-on-one -on -one coaching that came through breakthrough right before I called. She goes, I just needed more. And I mean, you know, what was most people were thinking, I don't want any more. It's too much. It's an hour, you know, a week for eight weeks. It's, she goes, no, I mean, it's good stuff, but I just needed more follow-up, more one-on-one -on -one interaction. So it got me thinking, okay, what if I had a loan officer meeting with a particular real estate agency on a monthly basis to go over the playbook with them as a, a class? Here's what we're going to do. And that's kind of why I started to come to accumulate value to validate. So let's pick out one particular thing out of the playbook that we think adds the most value individually. And let's go over this. So I started talking to one of my top producers her names, Diana will down in South Florida or South Alabama around the Gulf coast. Her and her husband owned uh, three different real estate agencies. And I said, what did you think about this? And she goes, that's invaluable for a realtor. She goes, the first two or three people that I met with as a realtor, I didn't do this on and I lost business off of it. Not only did I not get their business, they'd never refer to me anymore because I missed some things that were pertinent about their buying experience that they needed in the property. And because I didn't ask the right question, I was showing property that they probably weren't going to buy and I wasted my time. And of course, it kind of made them pissed off too. So I thought, well, what do you think about this? She goes, it's awesome. But even if you don't want to use this verbatim and you've been in the industry a while, it's going to make you evaluate what you're doing and maybe add something to it. So it's not by chance that the person that puts this together is a realtor. She's certified to teach continuing education for the National Association of Realtors. So she's a good realtor. But she also had her own agency. She's not just a teacher. She had, I think, 80 agents that worked for her agency represented a couple of big builders. But the last thing that got my attention off of it, and I'm sharing this with you because this is how I'm going to build value into it if I was going to sell it to a realtor, is I fired three realtors when I bought this house that I'm living in right now. And all of those three could have kept their job if they'd have asked number four here or number six. Do you have anything special that needs to be accommodated? Athletic equipment, fine art, large furniture, or does your home need to accommodate any special needs? A deal breaker for me was I had dogs. Um, I wanted a room I could isolate out from the rest of the house that the dogs could come in because we rescued doggies and we loved our doggies before we had our kids. Had a doggy door on it, so basically a garage with a bonus room off of it that could be detached from the rest of the house to bring the dogs up. But, you know, you don't want a dog shedding on you when you're putting on your suit to go to your Agent Marketing Academy classes. <laughs> so, you know, I couldn't have them have it be in the bedroom or the living room or anything like that. But I had to fire three realtors because that was a deal breaker and they kept showing me houses that didn't have that. We ended up finding our own house. So that's, you know, I, three different people found a lot of value in this. Um, so what are you asking your realtor partner? What are, Mr. Realtor, what are you asking? Do you have the, a list like this? No, man, I, I'd love to get my hands on that. I've got to happen to have a copy of the playbook right here. You know, I could come by your office when I'm doing my pot buys this next week, and I happen to be delivering popsicles because it's a popsicle pot buy day. So you go get you a two case cooler, put a hunk of dry ice in there, go order this bib from Amazon for $20, and you go do pot buys and deliver popsicles and playbooks. What? So, you know, popsicles and playbooks. I've got a bib on popsicles. What's the, probably the worst thing about doing pot buys 
is there anybody going to be over at that other office? Is there going to be a gatekeeper there? Am I going to be welcome? Have I come there before? Are they going to want me? What this helps is I'm going to be getting so much. People are going to want a selfie because Rocky's over there kind of poking a little bit of fun at himself, having fun with this, being high eye, delivering popsicles, wearing his ice cream bib. Somebody's going to want a selfie with him. So the guy over here at the Remax office, after he sees you dropping off popsicles at Keller Williams' office, what's he going to be doing? <laughs> Wanting some popsicles? <laughs> He's going to be having FOMO. <laughs> hey, brother, come on. <laughs> Bring it on over, you know? So – Tim uh, Davis did something fun like that with one of his other coaching clients. So this is this is going to how I'm going to be kind of in the call and let you kind of take over and go where you want to go with it. But I've been asking guys, you know, what's your level of excitement about your business? You know, and I had on uh, my last coaching calls yesterday, I, I did a poll: how many people have ever bartended or waiting table waited tables on the coaching call? The last two coaching calls that I did I had four on one, three on another, and two on one more. Everybody had done it at least once in life before. I've had lots of uh, restaurant waiting table jobs. <laughs> so what do your tips look like on the day that you come in and you're just in an awesome, awesome mood compared to the day that you come in and you just didn't really want to be there? Uh, you definitely see a difference. That's why even if you're in a bad mood, you better put on a show. You've got to either fake it till you make it or, you know, but even with that, I mean, you could genuinely, if you really were genuinely in a good mood, I did, I did better. People knew it than when I was trying to fake to make it. They just, they just knew it. So you, what you want to do is find things to do in your business that, that energize you, that fit your personality profile. So Tim had this guy, and he actually, this was probably a little bit out of his comfort zone, but he's like, let's find a fun way to get in front of builders. I want to get in front of some builders. So they hatched this idea that they got a taco truck. He had these T-shirts made up, Taco Tuesday with Chad Kurtz, put his website address phone number on there, went to a new subdivision that's getting built out and started advertising the crap out of it on social media that he was going to be there, and he had 40 – realtors or builders there for the taco Tuesday. I didn't get a price tag on it. I mean, I want to think it's probably a few hundred bucks to have t-shirts and a taco truck. But what it did for him beyond that is it gave him, it gave him a really good reason to be excited about doing something marketing. So he's happy to go to the job. So it kind of kept him in the game for a little bit longer. And I can promise you after the results he had, um, he's going to be reusing those t-shirts and doing this idea again. I think it's great. So yeah, that's what I, I'm going to say. So what do I fill my, my calendar up with out there? Um, activities that are going to accumulate, validate, isolate, differentiate, then where I can develop a closing opportunity and things that give me, you know, that give me energy. So when you've got the events, I, I love what you were doing up there at the bar where you're presenting, you know, which, uh, what the bar scene looks like over the weekend and then setting up something at the bar. You know, um, even if there's just four or five people that are coming to something like that, it's something you enjoy doing. It doesn't seem all like that work, but it's building your relationships out there. All right. Helping the brand. Exactly. Yep. So, I think that ought to be some some uh, some fodder that can fill. So, what type of events can I do to accumulate, validate, isolate, differentiate, and then ask for the business? What would it take for me? You know, who are you working with now? What do you like about the in lending industry? What's three things you could change about the lending industry? Come back to them the next time with some answers to some of the challenges that they have. And what would it take to earn your business? Taking some notes. And the more that you can do that, the more likely you're going to win. What's your thoughts? I know I've been doing my monologue here. <laughs> I'm just taking everything in. No, I think it's, I think it's good. I mean, I think one thing too, is just kind of activities that I know that work is just kind of kicking them up a notch. So, you know, I've always been doing the agent marketing academies, but 
at least work to do bi-monthly, if not more than that, you know, and, um, you ought to be uh, doing more than one a month because I, I really think that's going to be your wheelhouse. Um, and then maybe your extra event is going to be like one of the, somebody did a, uh, a, a, an underwriter brew house deal I saw on Facebook. So they have one of the underwriters that they had a relationship with come to a, a brew house and they did, you know, quiz the underwriter and have a beer. And it went really well. Wow. And they were targeting clients or realtors with that? Realtors. Yeah. But you could, you could do, there'd be both. And I'm sure anybody would have been welcome to come to it. But I think the realtors would want to come because the clients are going to come. So I think that's how I bill it. You know, are you about to be in the home buying process, thinking about being in the home buying process? You know, underwriters are a lot like accountants. You know, people are a little intimidated to ask them questions they want to ask because uh, they, they get them of these people out there that are kind of locked up in a closet that are so busy they don't have opportunities. So, you know, we've got a professional underwriter here. We've got my buddy over here, you know, Daniel D'Amato or whatever whoever you got to, to get in that. And he's going to let you know that they're not all, you know, meat eaters out there. They're all pretty, you know, they're cool guys, this one in particular. So what we're going to do is try to take a little bit of the pressure down. We're going to be sponsoring a night where you can have blue, brews and clues, you know. So he's going to go over to you with underwriting questions you might have over a beer. So, you know, show up from 8 to 9. He'll be out there. We'll buy you a beer, and you can ask the underwriter. Realtors, you're welcome to come in because I know there may be some scenarios that you want to run by the underwriter. And consumers that are thinking about buying a house, you're welcome too. We'd love to have you there. Brews and clues. And you wouldn't necessarily have to have an underwriter. You could have a damn good loan officer that knows guidelines really well and just bill it as an underwriter. Or if you find an, if you got an underwriter, great. They're willing to play game. But that kind of takes off. Hey, I'm usually here talking about what the best bar scene is this weekend. But here's this what's going on here. Here's what's going on here. But here's what we're going to be doing over here. So, no, I love it. I love it. So what can you implement? And when can we put it on your calendar that it's going to get done? Um, I already have a couple brokerages. Um, so a really good.